<laughs> Greetings from Chicagoland. This is Manira, the CEO and founder of Kismet Ventures, Inc. I am the niche navigator where I help people find their niche because they are transitioning or just looking to do something new. I have my guest here, Pauline, from LA, Los Angeles, here with me today. Hi, Pauline, how are you? I'm very well, Munir, really good to meet you. And thank you so much for, I'm so humbled and so thankful that you sh you're sharing your time with us today. But I wanted to bring you on board because I feel that there are so many people out there who are doing so many wonderful things for other people and adding value in other people's lives. And they're not taking the accolades or not promoting themselves very well. So I am on a prowl to find such people. And then I go and interview them, expose them and promote them. <laughs> I mean, I'm doing them good in, in, in the world. I think that's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you. So you have an English accent. <laughs> I do. I'm from London. Um, I, was, I was born in North London a long time ago, and, um, but I'm now here in, actually in Orange County, and I've only been here six and a half months, and uh, there's a bit of a tale behind that, which I'd love to share. Go ahead, share. Well, I, uh, six, seven years ago, 2011, um, I was persuaded by a colleague to go to a conference in Budapest. To be honest, I didn't really want to go. I wasn't quite sure why I was going. It was a... Uh, World Union of Small and Medium Enterprises and not in my kind of general uh, corporate work. I was running my company, Corporate Heart, which is all about uh, corporate culture. Anyway, I went to this conference and there I met uh, an American called Jim Oms and uh, we kind of took to each other over 24 hours. We had some magical conversations and what followed on from that was six months of writing to each other, 45,000 words by which time I thought maybe I should go and visit him in America, which I did. And he proposed and I said, yes. And we got married in October, 2012. Uh, the life would have been very simple, but um, I shall tell you a little bit more about that. We, we ended up going to Malaysia for four years and that's why I've only just got to America. So I'm a world traveler and my passion is magical conversations. Oh, awesome, awesome, awesome. So what did you do in Malaysia? Uh, in Malaysia, I was working with um, men and women, because that's my passion. Um, I work on the subject matter of gender dynamics. I, how do, what's the dynamic between men and women? And I've been working on that for the last 30 years in the UK. But going to Malaysia and working with men and women there of very different cultures, uh, a great mixture and women entrepreneurs, government bodies. It was absolutely fascinating. And what I discovered is that whatever culture in whatever generation is, people are people. And, you know, being men and women, it doesn't matter where we are, there are certain differences, let's say, which we sometimes need to understand a bit better. And so that's, that's the hub of my work is, is helping men to understand women and women to understand men so that we don't have arguments and we don't have all the friction that I see going on in the world. So I'm very passionate about harmony. You know, you have a point, but the thing is men always feel that the women don't understand them. Women, <laughs> that the men don't understand them. So how do you make them all understand each other? Well, that is absolutely the truth is that we're living in a world now where um, we've been kind of told that we've got to be gender neutral and we've got to be gender equality, which is fine, but we can't be totally the same. You ask any audience in the world, are men and women different? And the audience will say, yes, of course. But if you ask the next two questions, which are, are men the same as each other? They'll say no. Are women the same as each other? They'll say no. So we've got a much more complex situation than just men and women. And there are some fundamental differences that I think are beautiful and valuable to understand because if we don't understand them, that's where we get into trouble. So I'll give you an example. And, and this came up in one of my workshops in Malaysia is that generally in terms of research, it's often said that women don't think that men appreciate them. 
and you'll probably have a gasp from all the men watching this, but men will say, oh, of course we appreciate women. Now, the truth is that men do appreciate women, but they don't necessarily appreciate them in the way that the women want them to do it. And I was asking a, a young Malaysian man in one of my programs, and he said, oh, of course I, I appreciate my, my wife. You know, I come back from work and... Um, she comes back from work and then she's doing the cooking and she's looking after the kids and, 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 you know, and the woman was obviously very busy and I, and he said, and I appreciate her. So I said, well, what do you actually say? And he stared at me with some kind of aha moment. And he said, gosh, um, I don't know whether I do actually tell her, uh, but I, in my heart, I appreciate her, but I haven't necessarily said it. So what, what happens is there's a misunderstanding in terms of uh, the word said and the intention. Yes. Um, and, and women actually like to be appreciated very fully. Um, I often instruct men, and I do work with men only, is to make sure they, they, they appreciate a woman over and over and over again. They'll get much more back. <laughs> So it, it, it's very interesting because, to be honest, Munira, it's some of the most simplest things that we go wrong on because we make assumptions. So currently, I'm actually, I'm actually currently interviewing men about what men feel today about themselves, about other men, about men and women, because I think we need to understand uh, without prejudice what's going on rather than these misunderstandings. No, that's true because you know I feel like the women feel the men. I mean, I, I I was one of the women and I am, still am a woman, and, but I feel like the men don't appreciate us because maybe we don't tell them, mm. and even if we do tell them, they don't know how to accept what we tell them. Well, that's right, and the the fundamental difference is that men have a different. Um, if you like, it's like a computer. Men have a different hard drive to women. So the man's hard drive is much more based on yes, no, either or, uh, straight line thinking. And you know, when I, when I ask a question, I'm, I'm seeking a result. Now women work on a, a different hard drive, which is much more circular. It's much more um, rhythmical. It's much more flowing. It's about our emotions. It's about expressing our emotions. It's about asking questions which just expand our mind, not necessarily for an answer. And so what you see is that there's these two, the two hard drives are uh, the square and the circle. And at times when the language doesn't translate, it comes from that baseline. And once we understand that, then we can look at the complexity within us in terms of different types of women, different types of men. But the truth is that uh, our differences, I would say this, our differences make us alive and beautiful. Our similarities are based on um, we're all human beings. We all breathe the same air. We may have the same values. We may be able to do the same things. But the beauty of being different is something I think we should honor. Uh, but sadly, sometimes men criticize women and women criticize men without understanding this uh, differential. Your yeah. point about the square hard drive and the circular thing, you know, <laughs> it's uh, the square telling the circular circle. Yeah. What's the point? You don't, you know, you, you will never get it. You, you don't have a point, you know. Well, that's right. And, and we've, we've developed a world where um, a, a lot of men will say, yes, but it's most important that we build the structure, we make the money and we do this and do that very straight line thinking. And the woman is saying, oh yes, but if we go around this way and we do extra things and this possibility and that probability, and actually women are very good at building things and building business. But the magic is when the two come together because they're complementary, not because they're the same. So understanding that if you build a, biz a building, literally you want to have very, very strong foundations, but you want the beauty of the building to be uh, in tune with the environment. So this is the circle and the square. This is the straight line and the curve. This is men and women. And we're, we're much more beautiful together than we are arguing or separate. And, right. and if we argue, we're never going to have a magical conversation. 
And so how did you come with the idea of having a magical conversation? I think, believe you said that's your passion. Well, the, the reason is, Renu, and it's a really good question, is that ever since I was a little girl, I have loved connecting. Um, I like conversation. I always went to school early in order to talk to everybody. Uh, I was the connector in the classroom, and I've been a connector all my life. And I love to see people flowing and chatting and conversation. Um, and what I observed is that you either have magic or you have mayhem. And so I started evolving the idea of magical conversations. And in fact, my title, The Ambassador of Magical Conversations, was given to me by my daughter some time ago, around 2008. And the, the charm was that I actually produced a business card with that name on. And when I would hand it to people, they would say, oh, I need some of that. So there was obviously a desire in people to have that magic. So I evolved three rules, and that comes from my own personal experience. And the first rule is that there's no judgment. So you come to a conversation like we're doing with, with just our experiences, with, with our, our gift of contribution. The second is that there, there should be no anger. So once you get into anger, then the magic is gone. So you can be passionate and you can be uh, feeling strongly about something, but you don't argue. And the last rule is that you don't jump to conclusions. You don't pressurize people to act on something they're not going to agree with. So those are the, the, the magic comes from feeling okay about being in the moment of the conversation. Yeah. Yes. And, and, and if you think about the world, it's, it's very argumentative at the moment. Generally people are very uh, strongly opinionated about what they believe is right or wrong. And so my challenge to men and women uh, and obviously there's other diversities that come into this, but for men and women, certainly at the baseline, to understand when they're around the table, how they should honor each other. That is true. That, you know, you, you bring such a wonderful point because, you know, we, we evolve as we evolve and we grow older, you know, the only, and we come across the, the life partner or the infatuate that we have with another person and we we miss miss the signals and we miss the communication and we we don't communicate with words but we are hoping and we are vying for attention mm -hmm. if we just sp speak it out and just have a conversation with people and like you said the magic then happens but well it does and the thing is that i think we're not we're what's happening in the world is that we're blocking ourselves at the moment by being defensive. You know, men are stepping back a bit, I think, about what's going on around them. Uh, women can sometimes be either too forceful or defensive. And all of those things don't work very well for solving a, a, a problem or a conflict um, because we're, we're, we're jumping into the ring with a very locked mentality and I think that's for a start is very unhealthy so what what does an ambassador do well for me an ambassador the, the, the heading of ambassador is that the ambassador is a is a spokesperson so I see myself as a spokesperson I present I host interviews I I, pe I help people get into that circle so that they can have the communication. So for instance, in my work, I have designed a blueprint, which actually interesting enough is a square and a circle. And it has a different, it has different types of men and women within the square and the circle. So in the square, you've got different types of men who range from the very masculine male to the more feminine male. Who, the sort of feminine male is more intuitive. Uh, masculine male is more logical. And same with the women. So in the blueprint, the women range from extremely masculine minded, logical to the feminine minded, intuitive nurturer. But the, the idea with the blueprint is that we understand where we are and how we talk to other people. So when I share that with people, that's like the foundation. But when they go into the magical conversation, uh, it's their goal to keep to those rules. So it's their conversation. It's not mine. I'm, I might be there as a, 
an observer to make sure the conversation doesn't get blocked. But the lovely thing is watching people coming to life and understanding, oh, I'm me and I can be me. And the other people are different and similar at the same time. Now, obviously, it depends on the mix. Uh, and you might have all women, you might have all men around the table, you might have a mixture. But if they're intentional about creating a magic and sticking to the rules and they know who their gender type is, I believe we can actually solve many, many things in the world which are currently blocked. Even, even dare I say, at government level. No, and I, I'm willing to stick my hand out there. <laughs> no, because, and, and that's where it is. It's because the communication is lost in many cases, right? It happens yes. and it worked with a corporation, of, you know, and I was, <clears throat> I was often awed by the fact that they never allowed you to communicate the way you wanted them to communicate. I mean, they didn't, didn't allow us to go and walk into an office. And I am old school. So I, for me to just go walk into somebody's office and say, hey, you got a minute? I have a question about this. They expect everything to go through pot protocol, go through emails, yeah. where you just yeah. need one answer. And the fact is that people didn't know about people. They were just, you know, they were very, not very opaque, very, you know, closed. Yes. Like, yeah. I don't understand why. And, you know, that was a culture that was, it blew my mind when I worked there, and it was, you know. <laughs> well, I, I do, I mean, I think the traditional, and I mean, I've worked in corporate UK for over 30 years, and I've worked inside some of the, the big, huge traditional environments where some teams might be fine, but the whole business is very uh, policy-driven, protocol-driven, uh, hierarchical, all of these things. And all of those things limit the ability to be really transparent. Now you've got a world which is shifting to very young industry sectors, Google, Yahoo, all of these places where it's much more about collaboration, uh, it's much more about conversation. You still get the work done, but you, you, you find that there's an appreciation of different talents and attributes that come from different genders and different generations and different cultures. So we, we talk a lot about diversity, but diversity means understanding all the beautiful differences because that's what makes the mix. And it still needs to apply to the job at hand. So, you know, if you're looking at um, the construction site, you're more likely to find more men there because it's a heavy duty workplace. But, you know, you still might find some women who are there and they can do the job because they're fit for that kind of job. In another environment, it might be more women, say, uh, in fashion and retail. But that's also because they're fit for that job. But what I want to get to is that we understand collaboration comes from the heart. It doesn't mean you don't get the business done. You've still got to get the business done. But collaboration, which is much, much talked about, is a much more fluid, connective tissue. And therefore, conversations are really important. You're right, that collaboration comes from the heart. And the fact is that it's been talked about a lot, but there are so many people who are afraid of collaborating. As a coach, I know that because I'm a John Maxwell coach and I've tried to collaborate with a lot of people. Yes. Because and what, what's interesting, and I, I want to mention this, is there's, some, there's a really good example uh, with a major organization in the US, General Motors. And General Motors was always uh, got into a lot of trouble and nearly got, uh, went down, but the government bought it out. But I don't know whether people know, but there's been a woman heading General Motors for the last six years or so. And she's really pulled it into a collaborative culture and it's be becoming much more productive and much more profitable. And that's because she's taken the lead. Uh, she's, um, she's been there since she was 18. So she's an engineer. She knows what the work is about but it's now a much more conversational culture. Her name's Mary Burra. And she's, she's quiet. She's not necessarily known as a, a, a big celebrity or anything, but she's making a difference. So it is possible. Yes, it is possible. And I'm not saying it's not, but it, you know, there are some ways people want to have their cake and eat it too, and don't want to share. And I am in the, of the mindset that why don't we just share so there's 
there's people who have a little piece of everything compared yes. to now. Well, I think that's the nature of uh, what I love is abundance. That's what you're talking about is that um, if you have a, a, a table of abundance, it means that you can actually share your gifts abundantly, but you don't get precious about what you leave on the table. You say, this is my gift, this is what I do well, and this is what you do well, and together we make a difference. And it's true, you, you're right. So, I mean, I believe that what you're doing is so, so amazing because the thing is, it starts with a conversation, right? Well, it does. But I think actually before that, if I may say, it starts with awareness. And that's why currently, um, and I'm going to be um, posting these up soon, I've been interviewing men about men. Because I think men are in some ways much more straightforward than women. And they don't necessarily share how they're really feeling. And some men, and this is not against women, actually, it's about men, about men. And so with these interviews, I'm going to post them up so that men and women alike across the world can start listening to what men are really feeling and then women are feeling. And then we come together to use the blueprint for magical conversations. So we get away from fighting by becoming more aware. Yeah? You're right. You're right. But I, and, I'm, and, and it goes into the family situation as well, which I know you, you and I have to cope with as well. <laughs> You know, for, for mothers and, and fathers as well, but um, how we manage our, our, our children, our siblings, our parents, it all comes into the mix because in every situation there are men and women. That's so true. That is so true. But, you know, and I like the fact that everything, and, you know, John Maxwell is so big about it, but in his book of the 15 laws of invaluable, the 15 invaluable laws of growth, he talks about the awareness. And that's one of my best laws because without the awareness, you can't do anything. You can't go forward in life. Well, that's right. And I, I do think that people, uh, and I've done it in my lifetime and I try not to do it, but, you know, we do make assumptions. Yes. Uh, we're very quick to make assumptions about, oh, you know, there's, there's a woman, there's a man, there's an old person, there's a young person, you know, um, there's British, there's American. I mean, you know, when I, now that I've lived in, three continents in the world it's fascinating you know people do make limited um, judgments and assumptions whereas if you open up your mind to the possibility that everybody has something valuable to give then we can get much more out of any situation isn't that the truth i mean <laughs> as you speak you know, i'm thinking about france winning the yes the cup right hmm. and you know, the 70% of the population in the team were Muslims and then 70, you know, this, I mean, so, and it, it always, ha France has always been a country that didn't like the mm. population. It always frowned upon the hijab and everything. But then they had 80% of the people in their team who are, you know, brought back from Africa. So they're Africans by birth, but they were playful for, for France. Yeah. It's amazing. So, you know, I mean, I, I don't understand why we have to differentiate. I mean, I live in Chicago right now in America, but I've come from Africa as well. You know, yeah. I'm in of Indian ethnicity, not by birth, but I have, you know, it's like you've traveled the ocean just like you did to come to this country where it's so great to be here. And then there's yeah. so much freedom and so much, so much the, the abundance. But the fact is that there is awareness also is that you have to be aware of what you are, how you are, and you know, and you're right, the conversations. And I, I feel like having this conversation is magical because I'm <laughs> Good, well then I've done my job well. I tell you what, it's, it's interesting. I, uh, when I was at university a long time ago, I studied statistics and I did demography. And if you look at the demographics of the world, what's fascinating is in most countries, if you look at the split of men and women in every age, it's almost balanced. And I mean, it's almost balanced in the world and it's almost balanced in, in most age ranges. And I think that's quite significant that we should get the balance of 
it's not just men and women, but the masculine and feminine energy, the yin and yang of life. Everything, if you look in the, into nature, nature is all about the yin and the yang, the balance of, of the strong and the soft. Uh, and we don't, we don't question nature about where it is the way it is. We just say it's beautiful. So we should do the same with human beings. <laughs> You're right. You're right, everybody. And, and like I, when I do these interviews, I meet, I've met so many people that are yeah. so awesome. And there's more to be met, right? Yeah. So I feel like if you have people who, who I need to interview, send them my way. If people, I will too. If people are watching this interview and they think that they want to be interviewed, please, you know, send me a PM on Facebook or just send me a message through LinkedIn because we are who we are. We are a unique individual, each one of us. And each one of us is contributing to the value of the world. And, you know, absolutely. And, and, you know, one of, one of my greatest um, inspirations is the Dalai Lama. And he's always saying this, you know, there's, uh, what is it? Seven and a half billion people in the world, whatever we are. And we're all each individually uniquely contributing to the way this is happening. So whether we think we are or not, we are. Yes, you are. We are. We are. Yeah. And I don't know what this is, what's going to come off these interviews or anything, but I'm sure that people are watching them. And yeah. you know, each one that each person that I have um, interviewed has taught me something. Oh, yeah. that's really good. And well, as I say, my, my passion is to interview men at the moment. Uh, <laughs> and, that, and that's not to exclude women, but I just feel if we can actually understand where men are coming from and help them hear a language that's successful for them it will help women and yes. and i work with women as well um and the blueprint is for everybody and it's like having a new gps system you know you get on the freeway and you put in your location and then you know where you're going and it's the same with conversation you need to know where you start who you are and what's your direction and who are the other points on the map and, and if there's an obstacle or a block on the way, then you learn techniques to go around it. But your goal is always to understand yourself, understand the other person, and create value through your conversation. That's the simple plan of my life. That's an awesome plan. And anything <laughs> else you want to add? Uh, no, no, I just said, um, when I was a kid, my teacher at school said, um, uh, you really mustn't talk so much, Pauline. You must concentrate on your books and get your work done. And here I am. I lived my life by having conversations. So that teacher was wrong. I think, <laughs> I think you know, conversations are the food of life. And I think the only thing I would say on that is that, uh, and I often say this to women, you know, if you're having a conversation with a man and he glazes over or he returns to his computer, then just stop. Don't get angry. Just know that he's conversation bucket is full at that point so you're much better off just taking a breath going finding yourself a cup of tea and then coming back and chatting later so that's my my value add for women <laughs> and for men is to say it's okay to be uh in communication with your your uh the women in your life just remember that when they ask a question they don't always want you to find the solution <laughs> You're right. I remember uh, with, with what you said a few minutes ago was that, you know, your teacher said you talk too much. I had a report card every term that Munira is very talkative. She needs to learn how to talk less and, and learn how to be quiet. And I, say, I was thinking, in fact, this was something I was thinking about last night. They said, if only those teachers could see me now, I talk too much. <laughs> But you said it too. Well, I mean, I think generally, and generalizations are always a challenge, but generally women do love to chatter more than men. It is. And when men talk, they tend to talk very specifically. So they might talk about football or soccer or, you know, or cars or, or sex or whatever, or money. Whereas women can chatter endlessly about anything. <laughs> That is a gift. It's a God-given gift to us. It is a God-given gift. And again, we have to look at where the value comes together. Yes. Well, I thank you so much for your, for your time today. I'm very humbled. And I will share this video for those people who are watching. Please subscribe and like, share this video with us.
And, uh, you know, it would be awesome if you were one of my interviewees. So please connect with me and come on my show. Yeah, and thank you, Manira. I think what you're doing is absolutely wonderful. And Aww. you are a blessed woman. And, thank and, you. and you, you must also be honored by the world. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you.